The beginnings of Mormonism will sound quite familiar to anyone who has been following this series. It began when its founder, Joseph Smith, claimed to have been visited by an angel of light called Moroni, who preached to him a different gospel to that found in the Bible. Joseph Smith himself belonged to a family that was heavily involved with Freemasonry. In the Mormon church in Freemasonry, Terry Chateau writes, The Joseph Smith family was a Masonic family which lived by and practiced the estimable and admirable tenets of Freemasonry. The father, Joseph Smith Sr., was a documented member in upstate New York. He was raised to the degree of Master Mason on May the 7th, 1818 in Ontario Lodge No. 23 of Canandaigua, New York. An older son, Hiram Smith, was a member of Mount Moriah, Lodge No. 112, Palmyra, New York. Joseph Smith was also a Freemason himself, who joined the Lodge in 1842. In his book, History of the Church, he says, he was with the Masonic Lodge and rose to the sublime degree. As a result of these connections, Joseph Smith borrowed heavily, you could actually say plagiarised from Freemasonry in the formation of his own religion, and the two therefore share extensive commonalities in terms of symbols, signs, handshakes, vocabulary, and clothing such as aprons and robes. Mormon temple garments also tellingly bear the square and compass symbol from Freemasonry, although Joseph Smith gave all these things a slightly different meaning. I'm not going to go into too much depth on Mormonism, but we only need to have a quick look around the home and centerpiece of the religion, Temple Square in Utah, which was designed to be an equivalent to the temple in Jerusalem to see the same old Babylonian symbols. The inverted pentagram, representing Satan for example, is to be found all around Temple Square in many different forms, such as here above the windows. We also see images of the sun and the combination of sun and moon that represents the union of the male and female principles. Above the door, we also find the all-seeing eye peeking out from behind a veil and surrounded by a sunburst. The veil could well represent the initiation of going through the veil towards the light, or the fact that the true nature of the cult is veiled to the uninitiated. One of the ideas Joseph Smith took from Freemasonry for his cult was secret handshakes, and this is also alluded to on the temple. Masonic buildings have similar engravings, such as this. Within Temple Square, there is a museum documenting the history of the Mormon Church. It too contains the symbols that betray its mystery root. These pentagrams are to be found at the entrance to the museum. Manley P. Hall wrote, in symbolism, an inverted figure always signifies a perverted power. The average person does not even suspect the occult properties of emblematic pentacles. You'll also find this sun god symbol at the same entrance, just right of the pentagrams. And now finally, here are some more of those inverted pentagrams in the kid's corner. Mormons are similar to Catholics in that many Christians are not sure what to make of them, they seem to be clean living, well-meaning, and use many of the same words as us, so there could be an attitude that they're basically on the same team with just one or two unorthodox ideas. Mormons actually believe that they can become gods through being a good Mormon, who will one day be given godhood over their own universes, and that God himself was once a man on another planet. These are, of course, lies straight from the serpent's mouth. They believe the Book of Mormon has higher authority than the Bible. They believe that there are many gods, that there is a mother god, that God has a goddess wife, that there is no salvation outside of the Mormon church or without acknowledging Joseph Smith as a prophet. And they also state that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was not enough by itself and that we need to do good works as well, which is always a mark of a false religion. Hopefully this information, along with a quick look at the symbols, will tell you just who the spiritual power behind the cult of Mormonism really is, and will discover it has no compatibility with Christianity at all.